Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Could you all please be upstanding for the arrival of His Excellency, General the Honourable David Hurley, AC, DSC, retired, the Governor of New South Wales and Mrs Hurley. Commander, Major General Mick Slater, Patron of the RSL Veterans Centre, Major General Paul Berrigan, Senator Michael Rowlandson, the Minister for Veteran Affairs, the Honourable Malcolm Turnbull, Minister for Communications, Acting New South Wales State President, Mr John Haynes, New South Wales Minister for Families and Community Services, Gabrielle Upton, the Honourable Bruce Notley Smith, New South Wales Parliament Member for Coogee, Councillor Sally Betts, Mayor of Waverley, and many distinguished guests that are here today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rob DeGraff, and I am the President of the North Bondi RSL Subbranch. I welcome you to the ceremonial opening of the RSL Veterans Centre East Sydney, which is proudly part of the North Bondi RSL Subbranch. At this time, I introduce to you our secretary, James Isbell, who will be master of ceremonies. Thank you. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for Rob's kind introduction, my name is James Isbell, and I'm the uh, very privileged to be the honorary secretary of the North Bondi RSL subbranch and your humble MC today. I would now like to ask Kim Cookall, Australian Army Chaplain, to give the opening prayer. Joseph Narosky was quoted as saying, in war there are no unwounded soldiers. Then by extension, we might also say there are no unwounded soldiers' families. This centre, the RSL Veterans Centre East Sydney, is set, to an, is set up to enable those sailors, airmen, air women and soldiers who need to find help, support, advocacy and services, they might do so. Let us pray. Gracious Father, there are many who experience the trauma of service in the military. Some are physically damaged, others emotionally, psychologically, morally or spiritually. May all who need it find in this place support and renewed strength. Grant wisdom, grace and insight to those who will support those who are injured. We pray for protection for all who serve, for all our service men and women who are currently serving in harm's way. We pray for all those who are the peacemakers in this world. Grant your grace and your peace to all who seek what is good and not what is evil. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Padre. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure 
that in a few moments I will be asking Major General Mick Slater, Commander Forces Command, and Mr John Haynes, Acting President of the New South Wales State Branch of the RSL, representing the current serving and veteran Australian service people to cut the ribbon and unveil the plaque to formally unveil, uh, my apology, to formally open our centre. But before I do that, I would like to invite Major General Slater to say a few words. Your Excellency, Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon is a significant occasion. And while there is a small number of us here, which is not necessar necessarily reflective of the huge number of ex-servicemen and veterans who will make use of the services provided uh, by the centre. Uh, I think we have a, a good representative group here uh, for the occasion. Um, across Australia, we have uh, serving veterans and ex-serving veterans uh, who need help. Uh, no one knows more the nature of the assistance and help that is needed than the communities in which they live. And as initiatives like this, centres that are based in the community, staffed and run by the community themselves, we are really looking after the interests of our, of our ex-servicemen and veterans. Uh, the advice, the assistance and the treatment that our men and women will receive in this centre will make a huge difference to their lives. And to those of you who have taken the first step, done all the hard work to get the centre to the point where it is now, where it can open up and provide that, that assistance, the advice and the treatment, I thank you very much. I am honoured to represent uh, serving uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen and their women uh, at today's ceremony to uh, cut the ribbon, unveil the plaque and make it official. But when I look around, uh, I can see that we have the patrons, we have a number of ministers of the federal government, uh, we have some very distinguished people here. I feel like I'm jumping the queue a little bit. <laughs> um, and so, uh, to that end, uh, I would ask the, uh, the patron of the RSL, uh, the Governor, to join myself and John as we go across and cut the ribbon. Your Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, the centre is officially open. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me enormous pleasure to invite His Excellency General, the Honourable David Hurley, to the podium to say a few words. Mr. 
Mr. Robert DeGraff, the President of the North Bondi Returned Services League sub-branch. Thank you for your warm welcome and invitation to be here today. And to James as our MC, thank you. Could I acknowledge uh, the Senator Michael Ronaldson, the Federal Minister for Veterans Affairs, Honourable Michael Turnbull, MP, the Federal Minister for Communications and a member for Wentworth, the Honourable Bar Bruce Notley-Smith, member for Coogee, Councillor Sally Betts, Mayor of Waverley, Major General the Honourable Justice Paul Brereton, the patron of the Veterans Centre, Major General Mick Slater, as you're aware, Commander Forces Command, Mr John Haynes, the Acting New South Wales President of the RSL of Australia, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'd acknowledge today that uh, as we've opened this centre that we are on the land of the Gadigal people and I pay tribute to their ancestors and descendants. On behalf of the people of New South Wales and as patron of the Return Services League of Australia, the New South Wales branch, it gives me great pleasure to be here at the opening of this veteran centre, proudly a part of North Bondi RSL sub-branch. There can be no doubt that a veteran centre dedicated to the care and well-being of serving and ex-service members of the Australian Defence Force is a very important initiative. For active and reserve ADF personnel and veterans, the return to civilian life can be a very daunting process. Many ex-serving members face physical and psychological difficulties and all too often financial hardships upon leaving their service and their families pay the cost. This Veterans Centre provides an important service for those trying to get back or get their lives back on track. Ready and free access to support, guidance, advice, advocacy and information. This centre, I believe, will help reduce the impact of embarking on a new life and career for members of the Defence Force. The services offered here will include legal and financial support, compensation and advocacy, health and clinical care, mental health services, daily activities, home and transport assistance, the provision of appliances, sports and recreation opportunities and transition support. I think we're all aware that this Veterans Centre is the first of its kind and I think it has set the standard for all new services and facilities and against which others should be measured. It also adds, I think, to those services already available for our veterans through other organisations. It is important that there is a variety of entry points for care and support that are able to meet the broad requirements of our veterans' needs. One organisation alone cannot provide this. People come from many, many different directions and many points in their journeys, so many entry points are required. The enormous voluntary efforts of the Return and Services League in the Sydney metropolitan area to establish and resource this facility should be recognised and commended by everybody here. I congratulate in particular the North Bondi RSL sub-branch and everyone involved in this project on your commitment to seeing this project through to completion. Of course, the hard work on behalf of our veterans does not stop here. It would be wonderful to see more facilities like this provided for our other members in other parts of both this state and across the country. I wish, to, I wish the Veterans Centre and its staff all the best for the coming weeks as it opens its doors. I understand there is already much interest and support coming from the local community. I look forward not only today to visiting the centre, but dropping back into the future and hearing about new developments and the progress it has made. Linda and I are honoured to be at this opening today, and we include ourselves in the broader defence family, of course, because this marks an important milestone on the path to greater recognition of transitional support for our Australian Defence Force members, and in particular, for their families. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Following from our Governor's very poignant words, I would now very much like to invite the Federal Minister for Veterans Affairs, Senator Michael Ronaldson, to also come to the podium to say a few words on behalf of his portfolio.
Thank you, uh, Excellency and uh, Mrs. Hurley. Uh, to my parliamentary uh, colleague, uh, Malcolm Turnell, Major General, uh, Turnbull Major General uh, Mick Slater, uh, distinguished guests, one and all. Uh, Excellency, just on a, a, a slightly lighter note, I, I can only imagine during your long time in the uh, ADF, sir, and as uh, Governor General, as Governor, I suspect you've probably never opened a building with massage open uh, flashing uh, <laughs> uh, 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 above it, sir. Uh, can I uh, uh, say this, uh, please? And I don't want to go through uh, everything my department is doing, but I, but I do want to say this. Uh, today uh, is a very, very important day for contemporary veterans, not only locally, but throughout Australia. Uh, there is no doubt that for Defence and for my department and for the RSL and other organisations, uh, that business as usual is no longer an option. Uh, if we are not to repeat the mistakes of the past post-Vietnam, if we are to appropriately respond to the long-term needs of our contemporary veterans, then we all must change. We all must acknowledge that things need to be different. And my department is acutely aware of that and we are moving to do so. The needs of our contemporary veterans, and I, uh, people are shocked when I say this, there are more veterans post-99 who have deployed, they're involved in the whole of the Korea, Vietnam, Malaya and Borneo conflicts. Anyone who thinks this nation hasn't got a huge challenge ahead of it is quite frankly delusional. And we all need to acknowledge that what was done in the past is probably no longer relevant. And my department is now required to deal with contemporary veterans using modern technology. Modern technology engagement that quite frankly was probably not even contemplated a mere five years ago. It still fills me with horror the men and women transition today from the ADF, I'm only aware of one of four of them because until they lodge a claim with the Department of Veterans Affairs, I do not know who they are. Now, the great challenge for us in government is to ensure that there is a seamless transition from the 18-year-old man or woman enlisting to the 80-year-old man or woman uh, that my department will be looking after. And when I get back to my hometown of Ballarat, which is all too rarely these days, the first person I want to see is my 12-month-old grandson. And I'm constantly reminded that when my grandson turns 80, he will still have responsibility to care for the youngest at the moment, client of the Department of Veterans Affairs, who will be 81 and a half when he is 80. People talk about the centenary of Anzac and what we want out of it. And what I want out of it is that we engage with the next generation of young Australians, that they understand that the freedoms we enjoy today have come at a remarkable price, that the 102,000 names of those men and women in the cloisters of the Australian War Memorial represent those who have made the ultimate sacrifice to defend what we have. Uh, Norbert and Jeff and others, can I congratulate you on this centre. Uh, this is a centre where it is peer-to-peer. -peer. This is a centre that started the engagement of contemporary veterans with contemporary veterans. And the challenge for defence and government and the RSL is to make sure that this is the start of the process today and not the end of it. It is a huge, huge honour for me to be here today and I thank you for according me that honour. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Ronaldson. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to ask David Sims, a trustee of the sub-branch, to say some final words on behalf of the sub-branch and the League regarding the centre itself 
its aims and operations. On completion of David's speech, could I ask that all are upstanding as we will be performing the last post, followed by a minute's silence, the ode, and followed finally by Ravelli, and then the national anthem, which will be performed ably today by the Australian Army Band. Thank you very much, David Sims. Thanks, James. Your Excellency and Mrs Hurley, General Slater, Ministers Ronaldson and Turnbull, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. As a trustee of the North Bondi RSL sub-branch and as a member of the League, I would like to thank you all very much indeed for taking such an interest in what we're trying to achieve here. Five years ago, the North Bondi RSL sub-branch made a conscious decision not to simply watch the problems of our growing veterans community, but to act. And to act by providing comprehensive welfare, entitlement, advice and advocacy for those serving members of the Australian Defence Force, the veterans and the families who need it. It was due to the demand for our veteran services that the idea of this new RSL Veterans Centre East Sydney was born. You don't have to be a member of our sub-branch to seek our help. The only requirement is that you must have worn a military uniform at some stage in your life or be the immediate family of someone who has. This centre is designed to fill the gaps in the existing system and to assist and support those that need help in one centralised place. We'll provide broad and comprehensive services that the Governor detailed just a couple of minutes ago. And it's critical to understand that all of these services are free of charge. All but one of the professional staff at this centre are volunteers and are either still serving in the reserves or have had previous military experience. As such, they understand the needs of those who seek our services. They are led by Norbert Keogh, who has been the driving force behind this initiative, and they are supported by the committee and the members of the North Bondi RSL sub-branch. We are lucky enough to have two patrons for this centre. Firstly, Corporal Mark Donaldson, VC, Due to military commitments, um, he could not be with us today, but he extends his best wishes on the opening of the new centre. Secondly, Major General, the Honourable Justice Paul Brereton is with us here today, and thank you, sir. We very much appreciate your support. Ladies and gentlemen, in recent years, we've seen an increase in incidents of veterans' homelessness, domestic violence, drug and alcohol dependence, gambling problems, and a host of other very, very serious issues. The issues facing some veterans and their families are indeed very complex. Some veterans that we've worked with have completed more than seven operational tours overseas. We believe that we have a responsibility to safeguard the welfare as best we can of those who went away at the will of the government of the day both recently and in the past, and came back broken, damaged, and different from when they left. And the family members who remained at home and are now dealing with these changes to their loved ones. My hope is, as we grow and we start to turn our small steps into tangible gains here, that you all here might keep this centre front of mind and help us when you can as we try to help those veterans and their loved ones who are an integral part of our military family. Once again, on behalf of the sub-branch and the League, I thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, David. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now please ask you to be upstanding for the last post.
They went with song to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eyes, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old as we the left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Amen. Lest we forget. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the formal opening ceremony of the RSL Veterans Centre, East Sydney. On behalf of the North Bondi sub-branch, I would like to thank you all for your interest and your attendance today. And we'd also like to pay, pay particular respect and thanks to the local businesses that have enabled us all to assemble today um, with potential disruption to their trade for such an important event. We are truly grateful. As per the program, uh, we will now be conducting tours of the centre for our uh, VIPs and when complete, uh, we'll be walking a very short distance over to the Bondi Junction Waverley RSL Club for the reception. Uh, if anybody uh, has any questions or requires any information, please don't hesitate to ask myself, David Sims, Rob DeGraff or Norbert Keogh. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of today's ceremony. Thank you very much.